Um, well, look, let's 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 get into the uh, the stuff of the debate here, and let's let start off by looking at, at a la carte sales. So, when we're talking about a la carte, we're talking about the likes of iTunes and Amazon MP3, Seven Digital downloads that you pay to own, whether it's singles or albums. Now, obviously. You know, a lot of the problems that digital has brought has been that people have been buying just single tracks. They're beginning to buy uh, digital albums, but I mean, we are seeing a bit of a tailing off, are we not? Uh, overall, with other car sales, and I wonder what the panel's view is of, of where that's going. Scott, I mean, you're you know right at the cold yeah. face here. Yeah, no, for for sure, um, we're seeing you know the ceiling for for a la carte downloads in the States, it's even, you know, it, it's flattened out pretty much. And we're going to see it in Europe. But I think if you talk to anyone that's been in the industry for a long time, we always said that, that, that a la carte downloads was kind of a stepping stone to the next thing. It was never the end game. I think a lot of people thought it was the end game. With that said, I also see, I've changed my views a bit on on what I think that the, the next model is and how it's going to work, and really it, it's it's changed to allow everything. I used to really think, oh, it's going to be the access model or it's going to be this, and now I kind of see as I'm looking at what consumers do. I think you got to you have to think that there needs to be a model for all of them because even though there's no reason to own anything, people still want to own a digital file for no apparent reason, but it makes sense to them. And some people still want physical, um, some people want to stream, some people will, will sit through advertising, some people will pay you know, a tenor every month to, to, to block all of that. And, and I think what, what, we're, what we need to, to think about is there, there isn't going to be this one killer way that people will get music in the future. I don't don't answer the next question now. That was the next question. Which is what? That what, was the, what, what was the next oh. killer application? Well, well no, no, there, I, I won't answer it, but there are killer apps. Yeah. But there's not going to be the one, okay. like the CD. And even if you think about your own music consumption patterns, because you're also, you know, just regular people too, like we all are, you know, it's not that you do one thing. You don't say, I listen to the radio. Therefore, I don't go to gigs, I don't buy CDs, I don't get downloads. You know, it's blended activity. You do all of these things. And the more I look at it, the more I see, when you talk to regular people, they do all of it. You know, we, we're in the industry, we're thinking that if they're not buying downloads, therefore they must be doing mm. something else. And actually we're saying, oh no, they're doing both. James, I mean, you know, Rob Wells recently, Rob Wells is the digital guy who's just been promoted. I was going to say who. <laughs> to, the, to, the, to the US to be global head of digital. You can check his interview on Music Boy. Yeah, there we go. Um, but I mean, he's very optimistic and he talks about, you know, the industry getting to a level that it's never been to before through digital. He's still, you know, I mean, he would be, I suppose, in yeah, that yeah. position. Um, and who would ever, ever dare argue to his face? But, um, but really, I mean, what, what, what's the internal view? You must be kind of, I mean, you expressed a bit of concern anyway, but, but specifically on a la carte sales and maybe also on CDs. Do, do you not think it is going to kind of take off that particular part of the market? Yeah, and, I, I mean, and just to clarify on my last point, it wasn't so much concern, it's, it's more a sort of awareness that there, there are less of the sort of uh, the small startups coming through. I think we're actually feeling pretty bullish within the, um, within the business at the moment as to where, where things are going. Um, I think as Scott says, there's definitely going to be a, a coexistence of, of models, certainly for a, a period of time. And um, I, I guess the, the sort of uh, the trouble with what working in our department is you're always thinking about where things go next. You're always thinking about is it going to be cloud services? Is it going to be locker services? Is it going to be the kind of uh, the, the tap of music wherever you are under one single service, and everyone just moves from uh, one means of consumption to another in terms of the actual the, the device that presents it to you. Um, but we've, we've seen more than anything over the, over the last 10 years that it takes quite some time for any previous sort of mode of consumption to actually die out. Um, and it's down to all, all sorts of reasons. It's down to habit, it's down to um, sort of uh, desires of the market or the, the local market. People consume music in different ways and people have access to music in, in different ways. And we may touch on this later, but you know, mobile is strong in certain territories because that's all people have in, in the way of access to any kind of digital services through their mobile. There's very low broadband penetration. 
Uh, but we certainly, you know, we're, we're seeing the CD is, is still holding pretty strong at the moment. There's, there's obvious reasons for that. The fact is that not everyone has got their um, sort of home entertainment system connected. They're not all listening to um, Spotify streaming through a sort of wireless connector into their, you know, um, connected hi-fi or their connected TV. So people have very basic needs of being able to plug a CD or pop a CD into a hi-fi or being able to put it into their car when they get into their car. Um, so I certainly think there's going to be a coexistence of models. Um, I mean, we've had research come back to us that actually shows people as individuals will use different um, types of uh, types of services at, at the same time, which I found a little surprising, quite hard to believe when I actually got presented that back to me. I kind of think, well, if you're on a um, if you're on an all you can eat subscription service, why would you still do any kind of out of car purchasing, or why would you still buy any CDs? But there are there are some kind of key reasons for it, and you know, there's obviously a gifting market on CDs. People are going to carry on buying CDs for friends, relatives, etc. Uh, I mean, there's, it's a huge percentage, isn't it, that accounts for overall sales of CDs from gifting mm -hmm. and Christmas sales particularly. It's like Absolutely. I mean, this is key, key weeks for us now as a business. And uh, as much as our department is just kind of ticking over doing deals all the time and not sort of focusing on Q4, Q4 or, or my area of the department, but across the business as a whole, Q4 becomes the most important part of, of the year. And uh, whether it's um, people buying for uh, for relatives for um, for their Christmas presents, or if it's just because we we backload so much of our key releases into that period, that inevitably there's going to be a lot of um, a lot of sales in that time. But it, it is fundamental for us in terms of uh, the, the revenues we'll make for the year. But um, and yeah. how much longevity do you think the CD has got? I mean, like in ten years' time, do you think you'll still be selling CDs? Uh, I think we'll still be selling them to some extent. It will be niche. I think if you look at any kind of um, any kind of media owner at the moment, they're fully expecting the, the traditional models that we've been used to, whether it's movies and DVDs or TV programs, DVDs, whether it's newspapers. Everyone knows that the transition is going to be to the easiest form of access, which is typically through a connected device that you're going to have on you. At, at any time. Uh, that's not to say that people won't desire some, I mean, it, it might become more archaic, it might become more of a sort of nostalgia play, but there's always going to be those formats existing. But there's a reality that you know, people don't buy cassettes anymore because they haven't got cassette players in their, in their um, cars. There's, there's no reason to own one. Oh, you say that, except I manage this <laughs> band <laughs> that's selling cassettes. They're uber cool, right. uber trendy. Yeah, yeah, Vinyl was so last year. Yeah. They're selling cassettes and kids are buying them. Yeah. 